Hey folks, we are back again today for our Sue's Rain character painting stream. And this week we are painting up someone who is a cyberpunky character from the setting of, well, setting, si city of Gatherall. I think it's also the setting, so. Um, I have had to touch him up because the primer was proving a bit of a problem. <laughs> So I've had to clean him up, but which is he looks a little different to the picture I was, that was posted. Bit there that I missed. All right. So this is Demon Boy, um, who has decided to sort of embody uh, a sort of folk hero. Yeah. So we want to emulate a certain cyberpunky feel. But we also want to keep his sort of um, vigilante hero kind of a look. I love the fact that he's got suspenders on. That's amazing. Okay, so let's see what we can do. I think we should include some fairly bright colours uh, to make him a bit more visually interesting. A bit stuck to my tack. Just give me a second. I have to clean my tack up. Okay, so. Uh, we'll do the, the coat dark, I think. Maybe... Maybe a leather. We'll do it in like a brown leather. So we will start with some. I think we'll start with some pure brown for the coat, and then we'll figure out what we're doing after that. Okay. But we'll start with the coat. We'll put a base coat on that because it's a nice big area. So, some pure brown. This is one of the Instar's translucent paints, so you can see that it, it sinks into the recesses. But it still shows the primer through the pre-shading. It's really nice. We'll do a second coat though to strengthen it. I do love his duster. Okay. His duster comes to here. And then it stops at that modified arm. I think we'll give it a different colour lining. So I'm not going to do the inside. Um, get out a slightly smaller brush so I can get in there a little bit easier. Get down this side. There we go. That's, right. That's coat one almost done. There's a bit there that I've missed. I can go around and touch up areas I might have missed. To the underside as well. So now it's a nice brown duster. Our vigilante hero. Just get in there as well. There 
There we go. Alright, that's coat one of our brown. I think actually we will run down the edge of there as well. We'll do the same down there. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. We'll do another coat of pure brown. over the coat uh, but we can work on some er other areas first <coughs> excuse me okay so he's got goggles on his head um and we've got we'll get some we'll get something on his face So I'm going to give a base coat of some warm flesh. That'll tidy up. That's a bit heavy, but I can take that out. So the trick is not to apply your paint too heavily, but you can take it away a little as well if while it's still wet. You've got to be pretty quick. So it is better to start with thin coats. There we go. And we can get this hand as well. So we're going to give him a fairly light human flesh tone because that will contradict his, um, contradict, complement his modified arm, which we'll, we'll paint in a really unusual colour. So maybe red. But it'll help emphasise the cybernetic arm we are going with a warm flesh tone today okay I'm just mapping out my colour scheme right now. I think we'll give his coat a green lining uh, because the pure greens it's bright but we can make it look fairly dark as well so of course this is the one that insists on sealing itself every time I use it I've even changed the nozzle. I don't know why it does it. There we go. Okay. We'll get in here with some green. See, it's quite bright, but it is still fairly... We can make it fairly dark. But if we paint up his hand in red, this will be a nice contrast to that red hand. Get the 
color where it's been turned over. I suppose it actually should be brown. These ones can be green. The lapels. But the collar probably wants to be brown actually. I'll just turn it over. Okay. This is another translucent. Works really well over Zenithal Prime models, which this was until I managed to tear the primer. <laughs> Dope. And had to fix it up. There we go. Right, that gets the green in there though. We get some brown over this collar. Yeah. I think that'll actually look quite good. Get some more brown over this arm. I'm just going to get a bit more pure brown out. Pretty much used it all now. We'll go up a brush size for the back. It will be a lot quicker. So I like to use as big a brush as possible. In this case I'm using a size 4 uh, Raphael. You might think the brand doesn't matter, but it can do. There we go. Just get back in there again. That's it. Get into that one. There we go. Right. So we've got a green lining to his jacket. I think we will give him Um, we'll do these a different brown, but we'll, we'll mark them out with the pure brown. Because there's this belt here as well. And then we've got a holster. And that belt there and then obviously we've got the suspender straps okay so we have marked those out a little bit we need to decide on a waistcoat color and trouser color we could try making him quite dapper looking and give him some pinstripe trousers Yeah, maybe a, a pinstripe waistcoat as well. I think that could work quite nicely. Yeah. 
Right, we're going to get out some deep red and we're going to paint his red right hand. You'll see how much this shows up with the um, green lining. I'm going to give it some purple tones. I think you might give it a glow. There we go. Right, I need to wait for that to dry, but I still like the idea of doing the pinstripes. Hey! What, what's your character name? Belle Hoy. What? <laughs> what? I'm not sure I get the... I, I think that was supposed to be a joke. I'm not sure I get it. Oh, I see. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, yeah. I totally missed that. Apparently I'm tired, sorry. <laughs> I totally forgot to update the mini thing as well. <laughs> like a plonker. Uh, I can't even remember what mini this is. I think this is from their Oz range. Oz. See if we can find it. There we go. And hey Cyclone, how you doing? <laughs> Alright, let me have a little look, see if I can find my thing. We could update this. Uh, but yeah, we've gone with the green lining. I don't know, what do you think to the uh, pinstripe um, waistcoat and trousers? like a nice pinstripe. I think it could work. I think it could work. Ah, okay. That, okay, that's interesting. So just the waistcoat. I could maybe do like pinstripe but two different colours. So he's he's gone with the pinstripe but a bit mismatched. <laughs> Pretty good. It's cooled down a little bit, so I do like the idea of a mismatched pinstripe.
Yes, the window is open. It is still quite hot. Not as hot, fortunately, because it's evening. It's it's a bit cooler, but whew, yeah. So I think should we go with a blue pinstripe waistcoat and black pinstripe trousers? I think that could work. I think we'll do that. So go over his trousers in pure black. Blue and red. I could add a red pinstripe to the black. So it could be black with a red pinstripe. And I think we'll give him brown leather boots. Or base the pants in yellow and then pinstripe in black. <laughs> Ooh. Now, I think we'll go with black. He is a vigilante, so he's likely to be wearing fairly dark colours, I think. For his nighttime, you know, potentially nighttime crime fighting endeavours. Hellboy meets the cat from Red Dwarf. The <laughs> yes. Definitely the crossover nobody ever asked for. But now we definitely want it. <laughs> Absolutely want it. Do you think we could just pay Ron Perlman to spin around going <laughs> in a really swanky suit? Dressed as Hellboy. That <laughs> makes Abe Sapien very much. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Who's Lister, though? <laughs> I'm not sure I have the funds to get him to do that. <laughs> Kickstarter. <laughs> Maybe we could just kickstart a Hellboy 3 with Ron Perlman and get a good Hellboy again. Right, what colour pinstripe on his waistcoat? Sure. I'm not going to object to you uh, lurking to do housework. Means I don't have to do it. Missed a bit under there. See, sometimes doing multiple coats is useful. Right, 
There we go. I think we'll get some. We'll get some black on his hair as well. We get those chops. Oh, that he's got chops. Mutton chops. I like the idea that people avoid him because of his old school style. And they look at him and it's like, he's a bit odd. He's a bit weird, guys. He's a bit weird. Right, I missed a bit of green in there. We'll do another coat of green actually. Ooh, don't want that much. go so we're just darkening that up a little bit there like that. okay So I think we'll give him a nice dark, a fairly dark blue. Ooh, we'll give him dark slate blue. Um, waistcoat, that's the word I'm looking for. Oh, he's very stylish. <laughs> I've just noticed. He's wearing a waistcoat, but he's not wearing a shirt. That's the dark slate blue. We can get in here with the warm flesh. Very, very stylish. Apparently, gather all shirts are a premium commodity. Yeah, waistcoat and no shirt. <laughs> yep. 
I'm guessing in Gather All, uh, shirts are a premium commodity that he can't afford. I'll be going with Pinstripe as well. But yeah, definitely not wearing a shirt. And that's definitely a waistcoat. And maybe he has a dicky on. I could just really carefully paint one. Okay. He does have quite a nice belt buckle, though. I think he must have nicked that. He's possibly stolen the belt buckle. It's that or he was given the option of... Uh, Goggles or a shirt, so we went with goggles. It does sound like the sort of uh, ridiculous starting equipment choice you'd have to make. Just increase that a little, it's got darker, so... There you go. I'm not sure that is the case with the Savage Worlds, but... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and obviously he can't wear goggles on his head and wear a shirt. Um, they're goggles. They have been sculpted as goggles. Because, you know, he's not Hellboy. This is Demon Boy. touch up his trousers now because I managed to get paint all over them I am so tempted to give him pink suspenders well that was all that he could get
Ok. Looking pretty classy. Start to highlight up that black a little. We'll go with some concrete grey. Highlight up these trousers a little bit before I try and do the pinstripes. It's pretty subtle in the concrete grey, I'll be honest. But it's definitely there. Um, we'll add, we'll go with some cement grey next. Just add a little more highlighting. To those trousers. Okay, we'll start adding in some red pinstripes. I think I might go with the smallest brush. So, no, no, that's coming out all right. Just have to be really gentle. Trying to follow the shape of the trouser leg with our first pinstripe. Okay. Try and get another one in there. Which will disappear up there as well. Set. Okay. Hold on, I want a bit more paint.
one more stripe in there. Oops, that's not gone great. We can fix that. So the main challenge I'm going to face is going back over them to make them a little brighter. But I think I can pull it off. Just go over and tidy that bit up a little there. So have our first round of pinstriping on the leg. Let's see if we can do the other leg now. So that one can go down under there. We might have to do some in the middle of these to make them closer together. Although we could maybe do close together on the waistcoat. Have two different styles of pinstriping as well. Right. So that's coat number one. Let's see if we can get in and do another coat. So going back over the stripes. To make them more opaque. Bam. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. go so a, a second coat over the red has really boldened it so we can see the stripes better Under there as well. I need a bit more red. There we go. 
I think what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of, not that one, uh, pure red and see if we can add a touch of highlighting to those stripes as well. So this is a very bright red. It is, however, part of the pure range, so it's translucent. So it does cover a little bit differently, but we can add in some here. Add a little in there as well. that one a bit brighter just here on the knee like that I'm quite pleased with that I think that looks pretty good We're going to get some more warm flesh on the neck and face. And on this hand. There we go. It's pretty good. I'm going to get some greys on the top of the trousers. Where the suspender is. Suspenders. <laughs> Right. That's pretty good. That coat looks pretty good too. I love how the pure browns work. I wish the uh, person in the car would go away. But yeah, I love how the peel colours work. That brown looks fantastic. Now look at those pinstripe trousers. No polka, polka dots and pinstripes. Uh, no, we're not going with polka dots. They'd be on another character. I think we're going to give him brown boots as well to match his coat. I mean, you know, if you want me to paint you a character like that, you are more than welcome to commission me to do so. <laughs> I will happily paint you a, 
a character with myth mismatched clothing. Oh, pinstripes and polka dots. Like every article, I'll put pinstripes and polka dots on. Okay. I think we'll go with um, brown, brown leather suspenders, actually. Right, I need to decide what colour pinstripe to do on the blue. Ooh, I have an idea. I've had an idea. Can this work? Let's have a little look-see. So we'll go with white. First, Okay. We'll add a little bit more white. To strengthen our lines. Give me a second. See if I can get a bit more life in the white to help it help me do this. There we go. Right, so we've got the white in. And then we can go over it with some pale yellow. We can have some nice yellow pinstripes on his uh, blue jacket, his blue waistcoat. <laughs> We've made him quite mismatched because we've gone with two different styles of pinstriping it as well. Which makes him a little more mismatched. I think the um, the blue and now pale yellow stripes make him look a little bit like a, um, I don't know, which makes me think of a golfer.
Right. I do want to get a little bit of the dark slate blue just in between a couple of those pinstripes. And there. I want to make that one a little thinner as well. So like that, there we go. It is quite the waistcoat now, yes. It does have a little bit of the uh, fish face might wear this going on for it. There we go. We've tidied up a couple of those pinstripes as well. But he's looking very sharp. I wonder if he's as good a shooter as he is a dresser. There we go. Ah, oh, that coat looks great though. I don't even need to do much to that now. And look at it. It's pretty much shaded itself. It looks amazing. Yeah. Right, we do need to do some more work on the hand. Um, obviously his face, his other hand, <laughs> his glove. Um, I'm going to add, we'll, we'll go with some brown just around the wrist here. Like so. Sharpshooter or sharp dresser? I was just wondering if he was both. He was as good at shooting as he is a dresser. So yeah, is he a sharpshooter and a sharp dresser? <laughs> this this is what happens when you um, style yourself up a folk hero. When you live in a cyberpunk city. This is how you end up dressed. <laughs> okay. I am going to go with some... We're going to make a sea green wash to go into the coat. We'll have one drop of sea green, three drops of water plus. I really love the sea green. It is such a nice green. Give it a mix. There we go. Get it in there as well. Such a great green. I do love it. Oh, all the girls go all the girls go crazy for a shark dressed man. 
But he's not in a shark outfit. Maybe that's where he's going wrong. <laughs> I like it your way. It's cool. I'm going to go over the boots in the uh, sea green wash as well. Just the different from his to his coat. So we can go over those. We'll go over quite a heavy wash. Like that. We can take it out. It's not a problem. Like that. There we go. Give that brush a rinse. And then we've got big pools like there big pool in there we can take some of that out so you can just wick it away with the brush like that so it's not actually a problem to apply heavy washers as long as you do some clean up just get in there a little bit there we go but yeah that that green wash has really helped. So his boots look a little different to his coat now. There's something fishy about the way that man dresses. <laughs> dun dun. Dun 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 dun. I feel like I need the shark puppet now. I can do the shark hand puppet on stream. <laughs> and then I can have a shark dressed man. Right, let's add, let's make a purple wash. So we'll go with some pure purple. And this is going to be for his hand. So we'll go one drop of pure purple. We'll go heavy with this wash. So we'll go two drops of water plus because it is also a translucent paint. Oh, and be careful, we're getting a bit of grey in there. Right, I'm going to quickly go over the hand with some just some water that'll help the wash sink in. Like that. So if it's damp, it sinks in a bit faster. There we go. It's quite a bold purple. I like that. Oh, we'll take that off his coat. Quickly get rid of that before it dries on. Add a touch more around here. So adding it quite heavy again. Just trying to get it to sink in. All right, there we go. Give the brush a quick wash. And then just wick some of that away. So the benefits of applying it quite heavily is that it definitely gets into the recesses. I don't recommend it every time. I don't do it on certain models. I want to lower the camera a touch more. Since I am focusing a little bit lower down today. There we go. Oh, that coat, that coat though, that's just two coats of pure brown over a black and white zenithal prime. Even if I'd just done the white, 
it would still come out like that to a certain extent. You'd still get it sinking into the recesses quite nicely like that. But yeah, we have that nice waistcoat. We'll paint up the buttons as well. So I think still got some pure oxide yellow out, which will make really nice uh, little we'll go with little brass buttons. Like that. So there's only three buttons showing. Oh, I've caught his chin. I have to fix that. We'll go back over with the pure oxide yellow on those buttons. That. There we go. How's that? Those buttons have, are now standing out quite nicely. There you go. You can actually see the buttons. Pretty sure you have. You have to wear it next Friday then. It's mandatory. I want to see that waistcoat and then we can compare do you have any uh, pinstripe trousers like these as well you can cosplay as a, a miniature <laughs> right the wash on the hand is still drying, but I think what we're going to do is we are going to pick out some, so I'm going to go with, we'll go with a dark tan for the, the stitches. We'll make them look kind of like um, string. Ah, of course, <laughs> says the man who's on, I, I don't know, looking for them. Like, where, where, where are they? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, I'll add foxes. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, I'm not being entirely truthful there. There we go. I'm not adding foxes. Okay. So we've got a bit of a repair to the coat there that we've added in. Do another coat of the dark tan. Just have a little look. So we've got quite a few sort of like scuffs and holes. So I think we're going to get out some dark brown and start sinking that into those damaged parts of his coat. So we want some in there, some in there, there's a hole, I'll try and get some in this split, 
There we go, that he's patched up. Helping to emphasise certain areas. So we'll go under here. Add a little extra shadow. So that's that's what we're doing with this dark brown. We're adding extra shadow. Get in there. Just wipe away that excess. Get under there as well. Okay, so we've added a little more emphasis to the back of the coat in places. It's a little subtle, but it is there. So we're going to add a bit in here. Bring it up. Like that. Got a scuff there. A little in there as well. I'm going to add a touch in this line here. Like that. In there. Get around the underside of the coat as well in the dark brown. So under there, you can see under there. It's a bit tricky. Emphasize those nicks. It's a bit of a hole there. So we've added the dark brown to emphasize some of the features, which has maximized the highlighting that the pure brown did. So I can add in a little bit under here. <laughs> Don't forget to match the nips and the hips. That's the other miniature. Push that into there. There we go. We get a bit, of the, a bit more of the dark brown. We're going to go under the collar. Adding to some of these, I don't need much. For it to be effective. I think we'll also get under there.
we'll get in there as well. Pretty sure I have that jacket too. <laughs> Maybe I should have painted him ginger. I am pretty much painting you at this point. Should have gone with ginger hair. So I'll go with some camo brown for the gun handle. Paint that really dark grey. Like so. We'll dry brush a metallic over it afterwards. Gamer girls, how are you doing? We've been painting pinstripe. This guy's trying to be classy by having pinstripe. <laughs> Unfortunately, he couldn't get a matching set. Thank you. This chap is apparently from the gather all setting of Sue's reign. And I have been informed by my dearest other half that he's likely to be able to get a matching set of um, pinstripe without paying a premium. So. He's gone with a mismatch set. I think we're also going to paint up the goggles in dark grey. We'll dry brush a metallic over them and then I'll paint the glass for want of a better term. go right we're gonna get a wash to go on his skin i think we might make him look a little grubby looking um i've never tried it 
We're going to try some gray grime, which is an ammo mig shader. Let's see what that looks like. I don't know what they... I think this is pretty thin, so we're going to pop it on here. The label's coming off. Okay, it's quite dark. We'll apply it to his coat first. Ah, it's also very thin. Interesting. Oh, actually, that's quite nice for the coat. Look at that. That's definitely making his coat look grimy. That's the right kind of look to it for grime. Yeah, we definitely don't want it on his skin. Good test on the coat though. Yeah, look at that grime. We might go over his boots with it as well. Make his boots grimy looking. What the grimy? A little bit grimy. There we go. It's still drying, but actually I really like how that's worked. It's really sunk in. I like that. So this is supposed to be an airbrush wash. I've never tried it through the airbrush. I will do at some point. But yeah, it's, air, it's an airbrush shader. Right, we'll go with a dark brown. over the skin ah yes it does look a bit like quick shade I think that's because it's still wet um, it's definitely got a different a slightly different tone to it Oh, that's a pity. <sighs> yeah. That's a shame. Ah. Uh. That's terrible. I mean, that's... Well, yeah, there, it is fun. But yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Last 20 minutes. Good God. So that's like holding it all the way home and then pooping in your front yard. <laughs> to put it in a charming manner. <laughs> Me go being all charming. Game of Girls is totally stealing that one. There we go. Yep, 
You mean by making it all about Will Smith? Who barely passes as a bad guy. <sighs> yes. Yeah, there is that. If the backstories were actually relevant, it would be fine. I mean, the only backstory that was relevant was the main villains. I'm just waiting for some of those washers to dry. <laughs> While we wait, we'll go with some army grey for the base. <laughs> Get out a couple of drops and we'll go over it with a wash of concrete grey. Zombie's getting upset now. <laughs> <laughs> 